If I were to ask you, who is the main characters of the Christmas story, I wonder what your response would be. Most likely, you would say Mary, Joseph, and of course, baby Jesus. Now, last night, we looked at the nativity story through the eyes of Elizabeth and Zachariah. But today, just for a few minutes, I would like to look at the, the Christmas story through the eyes of two of these main characters, Mary and Joseph. Now, the two main passages in the Bible that speak of Mary and Joseph in relation to the birth of Christ is the first book in the New Testament, that's Matthew, and the third book in the New Testament, that's Luke. These are part of the four Gospels in the New Testament that go Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. So just for a few moments, I would like to turn firstly to Matthew chapter 1 and we're going to read from verse 18 down to verse 25. Matthew 1 verse 18, it says now, The birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought in these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, and shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Why? For he shall save his people from their sins. Now, all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. And then into Luke, Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, and we're going to read from verse 26. Luke chapter 1 and verse 26. It says there, And in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto the city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man which, whose name was Joseph of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favoured. The Lord is with thee, blessed are thou among women. And when, he, when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favour with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name, here it is again, Jesus. Thou shalt call his name Jesus. Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. And we do trust that God will add a blessing to the reading of his precious word. And now, both these passages speak clearly about how Mary and Joseph discovered that Mary was pregnant. But it reveals how differently they made this startling discovery. Imagine with me, Mary, a young woman with her whole life ahead of her, excited for marriage and to set up home. And then all of a sudden an angel appeared unto her and said, you have found favour with God. And you, you are going to 
bring forth a little baby boy and his name's Jesus and he's going to be great. He's going to be the son of the almighty God. So much for this young lady to take in. But what about Joseph? Think with me. It was huge. And I mean really huge to find out that the one you love is all of a sudden announcing to you she's pregnant. And I can only imagine that the first followed by many other questions was how? How is this even possible? In a moment, Joseph's world was turned upside down. Now, thankfully, before Joseph could do anything too rash, an angel appeared unto him and explained, Joseph, it's true. What Mary has told you is true. What has happened to Mary is unmistakably a work of the Almighty God. Now, not long after this all happened, the mighty Roman Emperor Caesar Augustus ordered a census over all the empire. Basically, this was an exercise to determine if all the population was paying their appropriate taxes. Now, for this to take place, everyone had to return home to their birth time. For Mary and Joseph, this meant a three-day journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem, approximately 70 miles or so, on a donkey, heavily pregnant. Now, upon arrival in Bethlehem, it soon became clear that the town was very busy and all the inns are more accurately translated as guest rooms were already filled. Now, some suggest that there was no room for Joseph and Mary specifically. Rumour mills were, were spread and fast that these, this young couple had been caught in the act outside of marriage. That's what many people thought had happened. They disregarded what they were telling people that that the angel came to Mary and the Holy Spirit brought a child unto Mary's womb. Many people didn't believe that. And maybe that's a bit like you today. You don't believe that this is possible. Well, in the same passages that we have read, the Bible says that nothing is impossible with God. You know, I personally believe in the miraculous conception of Jesus through Mary. Now, some suggest that there was no room for Mary and Joseph specifically. No one wanted them in their home. Others suggest that it was just a more general term. Basically, Bethlehem was chock-a-block because of this census. Ultimately, Mary and Joseph found a manger. And in Luke chapter 2 and verse 7, it says this, And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. Here, in a little manger in Bethlehem, the son of the creator God, born into this very world. You see, for me, Christmas is all about Christ. He truly is the reason for the season. And I think it's a real tragedy that many people in 2020 don't know the real meaning of Christmas. You see, I want you to understand this. At the heart of Christmas is God sending his lovely son into this world. Matthew 1 and verse 21 says, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Why? For he shall save his people from their sins. This little baby Jesus, born in a manger in Bethlehem, came from heaven to earth on a mission to save his people from their sins. 1 Timothy 1 and verse 15 
It's not really a verse commonly associated with the Christmas story. But it says this, written by a man called Paul, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. You see, the heart of the message of Christmas is Jesus Christ coming on a mission into this world to ultimately die on the cross to save us from sin. I wonder, have you ever looked at the Christmas story? Have you ever thought of the little baby? Have you ever come to appreciate that this little baby born in in Bethlehem was a special baby? Was a sinless baby? Was a supernatural baby? Was God's promised son? Was the saviour of the world? Here is the son of God made flesh. Here is the saviour of the world. Here is the one that can save your sins. Here is the one that ultimately went to the cross at Calvary to die for you. Ah, but this same little baby, 33 years forward in time, yes, would be crucified at the cross at Calvary for our sins. But this same one would be would rise victoriously from the dead. This little baby can save you and I from our sins. What is Christmas all about? Here it is. Christmas is all about the fact that Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, was born miraculously in Bethlehem. He lived sinlessly. He died vicariously. He rose victoriously. And listen, the little baby in Bethlehem, God's sinless son, he's able to save eternally. That is what Christmas for me, that's what Christmas is all about. And I would just love that you would come to appreciate the real reason for this season. Matthew 1 and 21 says, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Why? For he shall save his people from their sins. 1 Timothy 1 and 50. This is a faithful saying, and it's worthy of all acceptation. Listen. That Christ Jesus came into the world what to do to save sinners this Christmas time I would love that you would get your eyes off just for a few minutes the turkey and the tree and all the presents and just get your eyes on this little baby that was born in a manger 2,000 years ago that grew up To be a man that the Bible says went about doing good. Get your eyes on that same man that turned water into wine. Get your eyes on that same man that made the blind see. Get your eyes on the man that did so many miracles. Get your eyes on the man that came into the world to save sinners like you and like me. I trust that you have enjoyed this short message and allow me to say this. Have a, have a really happy Christmas. We appreciate that it's not going to be a normal Christmas, but wherever you are, have a happy Christmas and may you come to discover the reason for this season that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. May God bless you.